Thank you. Uh, okay, so, okay, first I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to talk on the physics case for high energy hadron colliders. Okay, so we all know the current situation that there is no smoking gun signal of new particles at the LHC and in other experiments. And the properties of the observed Higgs bosons are so far consistent with standard model expectations. Okay, so let's talk about some current limits, say new particle surface. So LHC uh, put strong constraints on many BSM models. So I'll just give you one example, which is say Gluino search. So you will see that, that the bound is around <clears throat> 2.2 TeV in the high mass um, gap region. And it's not very difficult to understand that from the cross section plot. So the production cross section for 2 TeV Gluino is around FM to barn. And so, and the like uh, for 2.5 TeV Gluino, it's 0.1 FM to barn. So this gray shaded region comes from 36 femtobarn inverse of data, and the bound was around 2.1 TV. Now it's changed to 2.2 TV. So like the limits are not changing much with increasing luminosity because the cross section is actually reducing drastically in this region. Okay, so I have already told you that most of the things are consistent, but there are a few anomalies. I think Professor Ellis already talked about mu one magnetic moment and W mass measurements anomaly. But there are a few more, like apart from B physics anomalies like RD, RD star or like RK star, RK, there are some anomalies in the CMS or Atlas data, like this di photon excess around 96 GeV in CMS and some excess around, I think 50 GeV in the Atlas data in the BB mu mu channel. Okay, so these are all there. We really don't know whether these are like statistical fluctuations or uh, some systematics. We have no idea. So we need to collect more data to either to exclude or understand all these anomalies, but it could be the first hint of new physics beyond standard model. We really don't know. Okay, so. Maybe there is one slide on current situation. So I'll point out uh, three uh, experimental numbers. One is the heavy search by Atlas in Tau channel. So you see that there's a dotted line here, which is actually 36 fm to one inverse data. And this is the current limit using 139 fm to one inverse data. So the limit has changed a lot. It's not because of the luminosity increase in luminosity, it's because of better background modeling. Okay, so another important thing is that now CMS and Atlas, they are actually adding more channels in the like experimental searches. Like one example is the like inclusion of hadronic channels and boosted like boosted WZ, et cetera, for high mass like Higgs inos or electroweak inos. That also changed the limit. And there is also complementarity because like other experiments like flavor physics or dark matter experiments also uh, actually giving us new information, new limits. So if you actually combine all these things like limits from LHC and limits from flavor physics or dark matter physics, you will actually get very strong bound in many cases, many BSM models and many BSM scenarios are really uh, cornered. This is one such example, so I'll not talk about it, but it's because of the complementarity. So like one experiment is ruling out one part of the parameter space, another experiment is actually putting strong limit on the other side. So the combination becomes very strong. Okay. Okay, so the question is, we are all asking this question, where is the new physics hiding? And so the question is whether we still have hope for TV scale new physics or it's already ruled out. And what do we expect next? Okay, so these are some numbers. So we are here around 2022 and CMS, uh, sorry, LHC has started its uh, run three. And, and one of the major goals 
of LHC is to confirm or exclude those anomalous results. Okay. And there is a new detector called phaser. It's dedicated for very light long lived particles. It's, it will also take data throughout run three. And you understand, you see that uh, after that, HLLHC will start its operation and it will collect 3000 femtobarn inverse of data. So, so we have collected say 150 femtobarn inverse and we are supposed to collect 3000 femtobarn inverse. So it's an enhancement of a factor of 20. So I think it's too early to say that, okay, we won't be able to find anything at the LHC. So then I should also point out a few things that I have already told you that the like gluino limits are saturating. It's because like if you produce very heavy particle and that decays to very light particles, then actually you have more energetic particles in the final state and you can suppress standard model background. And that's why it's actually highly constant and it's uh, mostly limited by the cross section. But there are also, that's why the limits are almost saturated. And if you increase the luminosity, it won't help much. So limit will slightly increase, but it won't, it won't get drastic improvement for heavy mass searches. But for light particles, most of the like light particle searches are dominated by standard model backgrounds. Consider two examples. One is like degenerate Higgsino search. The limit is still below 200 GeV. And one example is that this one, where Higgs decays to two scalars and the scalar exclusively decays to taus. The bound is just 10%, which is like nothing actually. So in such cases, you can expect some improvement in the near future. Okay, and let's talk about a few unconventional signatures. So I think it was discussed early. So at the high luminosity LHC, it will run with 140 pile average pile up. So this addition of timing layer in CMS and Atlas will help us to reject like to reject pile up because of the 4D reconstruction of vertices. But also there will be displaced tracking at level one. And this combination of timing information from say timing layers, as well as from equal timing, actually will hugely boost LLP searches. Okay, and there will be inclusion of HGCAL, and you can also think of like possibility of future uh, dedicated LLP detectors like Codex or Mathusla. Okay, so uh, these are like two examples. Here, it's actually some kind of LH HLLHC study where I have considered this model where Higgs decays to two uh, LLP scalars. And so you can actually have very good sensitivity at future collider, like the branching can be, the, the HLLHC will be sensitive to this branching up to 10 to the power minus five if you use like calorimeter timing, ECAL timing. And you see a complementarity between CMS results and Mathusla. Like Mathusla is the, on the same model. It's actually the mass of the particle and this is the decay length of the LLP. So you see that Mathusla will mostly cover the high decay length region and CMS semi on spectrometer or tracking or ECAL timing will cover the lower side. So it is a nice complementary. Okay, so, and this is about LHC, but there are other experiments going on. Like Bell 2 has collected 400 femtobarn inverse of data, but it's supposed to collect 50 atobarn inverse. So, and I think once you, once Bell collect more data, the uncertainties in the measurements of such ratios will decrease. Now probably it's around 25, 30% level that will be reduced below a few percent with uh, five, uh, say 50 atobarn inverse data. And LL, Bell also will be sensitive to LLP searches. There are proposals for dedicated LLP detectors. And in the dark matter detection side, many things are going on. I already gave you one example of LZ, but many direct detection experiments are running and the, in the indirect detection, Fermi, Ice Cube, and they are also taking data AMS02. And there are many future experiments like CTA, they will also take more data. So the point is that 
so the summary is the following that there is always a chance to find the find new physics in the near future it's not like impossible but nothing is guaranteed that you can understand if like there's a possibility but there's no guarantee also then the question is the why do we need high energy hadron collider in future so it's a like very vast topic i won't be able to give you a very detailed answer but i'll just consider three speculative scenarios supporting high energy hadron colliders but there may be other scenarios also so there will be a talk uh, e plus e minus talk so that will cover other possibilities i think the first is the like best one that is the most optimistic suppose you actually discover a particle heavy particle at the like at the kinematic age of lhc and that would be a late discovery like suppose you discover some particle like higgs you know say with mass 100 sorry 1 tv at the hllhc but suppose you don't find any trace of other particles okay like no like no stops no glue no, nothing is there only higgs you know like particle then probably the future collider then the question is like we'll, we ask these questions for Higgs boson. We observe the Higgs boson and we ask the same question. Like what's the, what are the couplings? What are the other decay modes? Is there any other Higgs boson? So we'll ask the same question for this new particle X, probably which is pretty heavy. And so if you want to answer this question, the presence of other particles or like other decay modes, all these things probably will, probably HLHC will not be able to uh, do much because I'm assuming that other particles are pretty heavy. So in that case, like future collider will give you like huge boost. It's mostly because of the pattern distribution function. You see that this is the mass of the particle and it's the gain from the, is a ratio of the gain from PDF luminosity, 100 TV by 14 TV. And this number is actually 60 TV. This is the maximum probably possible mass range at the LHC. So you see that there's a huge gain as you move to high mass region. So for Higgs boson, 125 GeV Higgs boson, the like gain in the cross section will be around 150 because Higgs mass is around this region, 100 GeV region. So you will gain uh, 10, a factor of 10 in the cross section and some num uh, in, and some like factor of 10 from the luminosity. So gain is right something 100 to 150. But in the high mass region, you will gain, hugely gain. Okay, so, so here are some like simple examples, like as we are, as I'm talking about Susie example, but it can be anything. So that 100 TV collider or some future collider will be sensitive to uh, like such strongly interacting particles, mass range, say 10 to 15 TV or something. So this is actually ballpark number. There should be more studies and depending on the like decay modes and all these things. So it's a, another similar study for stops. So the idea is, the basic idea is that if you discover something at LHC, then probably the FCC HH or 100 TV collider will be sensitive to multi TV range. Okay, this is the same thing for PSM Higgs bosons also. It will be sensitive to several TV. Okay, so uh, then the second scenario is uh, also optimistic because like you don't see anything at the LHC, but breakthrough comes from other experiments. Say you see some heavy dark matter particle in say direct detection or in indirect detection, or maybe some flavor physics anomalies confirmed. I don't know how, but, or maybe you combine many things and some unified picture emerge. In that case, probably from the such uh, data, probably you will be able to uh, get the scale of the new physics. It's very similar to the, like the WZ discovery from Gargamel experiment. And you combine the data and get the, uh, the mass scale of the W and Z. So if this happens, probably we'll get the, some new energy scale. And in that case, here I have given two examples. One is the dark matter. So this 100 TV collider will be sensitive to dark matter scenarios also, like it will cover huge uh, dark matter parameter space in mono X plus mate channel and mediator searches will also be improved. The Higgs to invisible branching 
can go say around 10 to the power minus four. And like, since I'm talking about supersymmetry, like Higgs knows and we knows generally search by using disappearing tracks. So disappearing track search will be sensitive to the full mass range of the thermal relic parameter space at FCC HH. Okay. And what about resonances? Because this I have already told you, probably some results will give you the energy scale. And actually FCC HH will gain in the high mass searches. This is one example where you see the, uh, it's actually some Z prime that decays to some leptons you can probably reach around say 30 to 40 TV range using 30 uh, Atoburn inverse. But the point is that there, these studies are probably used some Delphi's using some more granular calorimeter, et cetera. So I'll come to that point if I have time. And the third situation is that, it's probably that nightmare scenario that no hint of new physics at late C, from LHC dark matter flavor physics, then we really don't know nothing about, like don't know about the scale of the new physics. Okay, so in that case, even in this case, I'll say that the future Hadron Collider will be the best option for new physics searches because FCC HH, I have already told you for high mass searches, it will, you'll have huge enhancement in the cross section, as well as in the luminosity side, you have a gain of factor of 10. So, also FCC HH will have some definite goal, which is a Higgs precision and like understand the Higgs potential. These are like two possible, like two definite goals and not so specific goals are like, I already discussed like dark matter, resonance searches, all these things will be covered by FCC HH. But uh, let me talk about these two uh, points that, so because the cross section will increase and you have huge luminosity, so you can expect like 10 to the power 10 Higgs boson at FCC HH and see that the, the precision will be of the order of 0.1%. This is the statistical, if you just consider statistical uncertainty, if you combine all these things, probably it will be like a percent level uncertainty you can achieve. This is actually very precise measurement of all the Higgs couplings and you can compare with the HLLHC. And the, another point is I have already told you that probably BSM effects, technically it could affect the measurement of Higgs coupling. It can modify the Higgs potential. So we need to measure the self coupling of the Higgs boson very precisely. And at the HLLHC will not be able to measure lambda very precisely because of the limited sample. So future H, H collider will provide the unique opportunity to, because it's like 30 times enhancement in the cross section and the lambda, the coupling can be measured the few percent precision and mostly significance will come from BB or standard channel BB gamma gamma. So you see it's actually there, this one. Mm, yeah, this one, it's 5%. And if you consider all the uncertainties, it's like around 7% at FCC HH. Okay, so, and also you can also gain something in the top quark physics also. Like if you want to study rare decay modes, FCNC and all these things, you will have a huge gain in this side. Okay, so there are actually extra capabilities of uh, future colliders. I'll probably skip this slide. But one important thing is that we can also construct LLP detectors at FCC HH because the collider as well as the detectors are not yet constructed. And we can actually optimize the position as well as the size of the detector to maximize the sensitivity. Unlike uh, HLLHC, where we have to find out empty spaces in the like some tunnel or some near the various interaction points. Okay, so and we can feed the LLP detector. So this is actually a major uh, advantage. So in our paper, we actually talked about a dedicated LLP detectors called the light. And we actually, we have talked about several possibilities, but the point is that if you can place this detector reasonably close to the interaction point, you can actually prove, um, you can actually have a g improvement of the order of say, this is actually Higgs to 5 same, same model. 
you can expect an improvement by a factor of 540. And 150 comes from the cross section and integrated luminosity. But you can gain a factor of 3, 4 by moving the detector close to the interaction point. So here I'm talking, about, probably it's not very visible, like, but the, the branching can be probed like of the order of 10 to the power Higgs 2, 5 pi branching can be probed up to say 10 to the power minus eight or something. So it's actually very promising. Okay, so uh, so I'll just, how much time? Okay, so I think I'll just talk about a few challenges. Uh, what I understand, like the point is that for, um, if we move from HLLHC to FCC HH, the pileup will be increased from say 200 to 1000. So that will actually decrease the average distance between two vertices. And you will probably require excellent spatial and timing resolution uh, for pileup mitigation. And some of the results will actually depend on those factors. And probably you need some like advanced detectors and some algorithms to keep the resolution. Like say, talk about, let's talk about diphoton invariant mass distribution. If it is like very bad, then probably you won't be able to identify Higgs boson right, in that channel. Like all the efficiencies for B, tau tagging and ultra relativistic particles, because we are talking about multi TV particles. So you can have highly energetic particles. So there are actually uh, some concerns and actually people are working on that side. And there are actually some like specific requirements like the search, search uh, sensitivity of Higgs in search using disappearing track probably will depend on the number of pixel layers in the tracker. Okay. So because the Higgs uh, tracks are like shorter than we know tracks. So probably you will require more tracker layers in the uh, tracker to cover the thermal region. Okay, otherwise probably you may miss some part of it. So there are some such studies. And another point is that probably for light particles, so suppose we are talking about some Higgs decays to some scalars. So these are light particles and probably you have to increase the energy threshold at uh, FCC HH. Actually, if we increase the energy threshold, the angular separation between the decay products of such light particles will be reduced. So in that case, we may actually lose some sensitivity in the light particle searches. And also similar problem will probably face similar problems in the ultra high PT uh, like particles, like say 5 TV top core coming from 15 TV stops. So there will be like, it will be highly collimated and probably dedicated uh, tagging algorithm, probably using tracker or something will be required or very high granular calorimeter will be required to probe such regions in the parameter space. Okay, so this is my summary. So future Hadron Collider of a rich physics, like high mass searches, it actually, uh, you can actually gain hugely in the high mass searches. And you can also probe like rare processes because of the increase in luminosity and cross section. And you can actually study Higgs physics very precisely. And another point is that you can probably think of new facilities uh, for FCC HH, like fixed target experiments or dedicated LLP detectors like Delight can be incorporated very easily. You probably can ask this question whether we need electron positron collider or hadron collider. I think it's a situation dependent question. So I think there will be a dedicated talk on this point. And I think in case of no discovery in the recent future, probably Hadron Collider is still the better choice for physics studies. And so, thank you. Okay, thank you. Do you have questions? Uh, you mentioned about uh, you know various cross sections with, at very you know about 
under TV or something like that, mm -hmm. based on this um, uh, PDF classes. Um, those are actually uh, based on the uh, leading order computations are, you know, about 800 for GG goes to Higgs. Uh, oh. um, How reliable that fluxes are actually at that? Probably, yeah, so. Under TV because. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I think it's a very interesting question. So you see that, okay, yeah. So yeah, we are probably sitting in that region, 100 GV region for Higgs boson. So probably we are probably, yeah, the X is pretty small, right? That's the point in that case. So I have seen some, uh, I think if you go below 10 GV or 20 GV, then I think probably will hit very small X and probably the uncertainty is pretty large. But I think for Higgs boson, it's not that bad probably. I really don't know the error bars. But probably in the 100 GV, it's probably reasonable. But yeah, that's the, but if you go to like very low mass, like 10 GV or something, then probably we really don't know the uh, I think even, even for large, in very large masses. Yeah, large mass, it's PDF also a problem. That's true. Yeah, like well if you like move to like 0.4 or 0.5 X region, then you have the same problem actually. In the table, you add these numbers for cross sections. Yes. You had a table where. Yeah. This numbers, they are based on. Uh, I think they have. Leading order computations. Or... No, I don't think so. I think this is all next to leading order. Yeah, that's yes. what I can remember. I see. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I had slightly different question, but. Because of this, I just want to ask as a continuation mm -hmm. that in these all these precisions that are being uh, mentioned, for example, when you say statistics, statistical but systematic plus Lumi. So are these systematic just experimental systematics or what I call theoretical systematics? I think they have also taken. They partially have, his NLO effects, but also the PDFs themselves. I think they have taken some systematics in the theory side also. Okay. While calculating these so numbers, but that, I don't know that that number is reliable or not. That I don't know. Probably, probably as, have to... as a matter of fact, that brings me to my next question. Uh, still not to my origin. The next question is then: How do these measurement uh, precisions that are being quoted? How do they compare with what a E plus E minus machine can do, like the FCC or CEPC, which is perhaps they are planning to take, bring it even sooner in the future so yeah i don't have color. the actually i don't have the slide for e plus e minus collider mm. so yeah i think i don't know the answer for okay. e plus i think they, i think these are slightly better as far as i can remember these ones i think so at least like anyway we can ask are, the same yeah question we can to ask swin. Yeah. we can ask this question to swen tomorrow yeah right? because i think at least in the dihex channel it's probably better for sure. No, th this but, is a, actually you're right that dihigs is one of the most co complicated case if you start considering the complementarity yes. of a hadronic collider versus the hmm. LHC and that actually brings to my original question which was partially in you know Chris had already touched upon it in his uh, talk is that this two uh, you know delta uh, accuracy of five percent in uh, lambda right hmm. something yeah. like that. Now, what does it buy, you know, if I am looking at the scale of new physics, what does this 5% accuracy of the measurement buy me in terms of some sort of a uh, model independent uh, scale uh, information about the scale of new physics, particularly in the self-coupling uh, region? I mean, that was kind of when you said delta rho and then so I just have want to have, is there some estimates of such type that people have done? Uh, I think if you want to do that, probably you have to uh, take a different, like potentially you have to add some effective operators and check the, exactly, exactly. Check the uh, difference, so has, right? Has, have I think that? there are some studies, at, at least high, uh, like effective operator context. I think there are some, at least I think, uh, at least in the context of like, uh, uh, Electric phase transitions, there are some such limits available. 
like where you modify the potential, right? So that studies are available, but I don't have those slides actually. So. Because again, that brings yeah. it to, maybe tomorrow I ask this yeah. question. Of Sven I think Devajati is saying something. <laughs> okay, so if I, if I talk about, uh, you know, next order correction, that would be down by a factor of V square by lambda square by lambda being the cutoff, right? Uh, okay, so a 5% change in the effective lamb, uh, this uh, self-coupling, is not going to translate to a large no, cutoff. this is the precision, right? This is the precision. Precision in lambda. So yes. if, if you have so, something different, so okay. your lambda measurement will be very different from one, right? No, no, that I understand. But supposing it's 1.05, so you will ascribe the 0 0.05 to a V squared by cutoff yeah. squared. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, cutoff squared a... is not <laughs> very, very big. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but... Uh, Order one coefficient, yes. Yeah. Okay, let's thank our speaker again. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, that is a question. One last, sorry. I was just going to say that I did show a slide indicating what would be the improvement in the sensitivity to various different operator coefficients yeah. with various different colliders. And one has to remember that it's not just the collider, but also the previous colliders that you have to take into account. So for example, uh, people often talk about what you could do with an E plus and minus collider, but forgetting that before then you're going to have high luminosity LHC. So uh, for at least a partial answer to the question, I refer you to my slide. Okay. All right, thank you again.